What's up, everybody? I'm Brad. Welcome to Sports Magazine Collector. In this video, part two, we will follow up from our previous video and talk about the primary differences in collecting sports magazines versus sports cards. If you haven't yet seen part one, which covers all the similarities, go ahead and check that one out first and head back this way. So the hobbies of collecting sports cards and sport magazines definitely have a lot of similarities, which is why many collectors enjoy both. However, there are definitely some stark contrasts as well. So let's jump into some of the main differences that make sports magazine collecting just a little bit unique. When it comes to sports cards, you can find a card of pretty much anyone that you want. And that goes beyond the four major sports, but also extends into areas like golf, wrestling, soccer, NASCAR, UFC, even celebrities have cards available. So really, it doesn't matter if you're Michael Jordan, Smush Parker, Albert Pujols, Rusty Koontz, Tom Brady, Shamanga Biakabatuka, even China, Whitney Houston, and the Philly Fanatic, pretty much everyone has a rookie card. Now, that's obviously not the case with sports magazines. I don't know the exact number, but based on the volume of issues released, you can safely say that there have been at least 4,000 different individuals on the cover of a Sports Illustrated. So obviously not everyone has been on a cover. And there's really two different ways that you can look at this. Number one, fewer people on the cover makes it a little more exclusive and adds a bit of rarity. Or number two, it limits you from being able to collect some of those lesser known players who have not made a cover. However, remember that you aren't just limited to Sports Illustrated. SI issues are definitely the most collectible, but CGC will grade any magazine that fits within their specific dimensions. This means that you can definitely go out and find other magazines that feature your favorite player and get them graded by CGC. I'm a big Cardinals fan, so let's take someone like Paul Goldschmidt, for example. Goldschmidt has had an excellent career, and he seems to be on his way to punching a Hall of Fame ticket, but he's never been on the cover of Sports Illustrated. Now, if I go to eBay and I search Paul Goldschmidt magazine, I actually come up with four pretty good options that I could send off to CGC and get graded. Let's look at someone of even lesser status. Sticking with the Cardinals theme, this is their center fielder, Harrison Bader. An eBay search for Harrison Bader magazine brought up zero results, but a Google search did allow me to find that he was one time on the cover of a Cardinals magazine issue in 2018. I couldn't find any for sale, but there you go. The hunt is on for you Harrison Bader fans to track down a copy of that issue. Now, Similar to the first difference of not everyone having a magazine cover, let's talk even more about one of the biggest contrasts between cards and magazine, and that is the number of options available. So first off, how many Sports Illustrated issues are there? Well, if you count the commemorative issues, the swimsuit issues, the special editions, the SI for kids, and all those different options, you've actually got over 6,000 Sports Illustrated issues that have been put out since the first one was released in 1954. Now, how many sports cards are out there? Well, let's just say it's a little bit more than 6,000. In fact, let's take a look at one of the most popular sets in modern sports cards, Panini Prism. The 2019-20 Panini Prism basketball set had a checklist of 300 cards. And each of those 300 cards has a total of 40 different parallels. Yes, 40 different parallels. Now, if you're unfamiliar with what a parallel is in the sports card world, it's basically where you have the exact same card, but just different versions of it with various colors and background designs. So here's three examples of a Zion Williamson card from this Panini Prism set. Each are the same card, just with slightly different twists and variations to make it a different parallel. So if you do the math, that means there are a total of 12,000 different cards available in just the 2019-20 Panini Prism set. Do you remember in another video when I said that I felt like the sports card hobby was starting to get a little watered down? And to repeat, there have only been a little bit over 6,000 different types of Sports Illustrated issues since 1954. So is this good or bad? Well, it really depends on how you look at it. Sure, if you're looking to amass thousands and thousands of different collectibles, then cards are obviously going to be a much better choice. However, if you want to focus on something a little more narrow, a little more manageable, a hobby where you could actually be 100% aware of every single possible option out there, then collecting Sports Illustrated would be a better option for you. For example, at one point in time, I convinced myself that I was going to collect every Kobe Bryant card. And I've probably gotten the ballpark of 300 at this point, but it was starting to feel really overwhelming and it just did not feel achievable. 
With Sports Illustrated, on the other hand, Kobe has had 24 weekly issues. And he's had 49 total issues when you count all of the commemorative and special editions. So despite the fact that some of those issues are pretty rare in newsstand, it seems like it's a lot more of an obtainable task. And Kobe's been on the cover more than just about any other athlete. So when I look at another one of my favorite players like Yadier Molina, he's only been on the cover of Sports Illustrated one time. So that issue, while it is hard to find, it's a lot of fun trying to track it down. It's even more fun trying to track one down with the eventual goal of getting one that's in a 9.8 or the best condition possible. Now, once again, please remember, there are some other publications with good sports magazines to collect. The Sports Illustrated will always be number one as far as collectability and value. And even when you take all those other publications into account, the point remains the same, that the sheer number of different types of sports cards available absolutely blows away the number of options for sports magazines. When it comes down to it, the most valuable collectibles are almost always the ones that are more scarce and more difficult to find. In my video titled The Basics of Collecting Sports Illustrated, I detailed how Sports Illustrated newsstand issues are extremely rare in comparison to most print runs for sports cards. And to recap a point from part one of this video, the Mickey Mantle 1952 Topps card has been graded by PSA 1,483 times, but his first cover from Sports Illustrated has only been graded 27 times. Now, the exception to this would be sports cards with low serial numbers, such as those numbered to 25, 10, or even 1. You won't find this kind of exclusivity with Sports Illustrated issues, although Slam, the basketball magazine, has released several limited print run editions out of a certain number. But even with those serialed cards and magazines, it's kind of a manufactured rarity. With the SI newsstands, these were likely anywhere in the ballpark of 40,000 to 75,000 copies originally made, but the rarity comes from the fact that not many people kept them, and for those who did, very few were kept in good condition. With sports cards, pretty much any player from the 1980s or later has multiple rookie cards. In fact, once you get into the 90s, most players have many rookie cards. In one of my prior videos, I detailed how LeBron James has easily over 100 variations that are considered to be rookie cards. Even Michael Jordan has three cards that can be considered a rookie. The 1986 Fleer, the 86 Fleer sticker, and the 1984 Star card. The numerous options for athletes can sometimes make it difficult for collectors to determine which rookie card to get and which will carry the most value. For Sports Illustrated, that is obviously not the case. It's really cut and dry. Athletes have one first cover only. The first time that an athlete is featured on a weekly issue of Sports Illustrated is considered to be their first cover. Now, if an athlete appears on a commemorative cover or an SI for kids before their first weekly issue, then there could be a little bit of debate about that, but that's a topic for another day. For the most part, rookie cards have multiple options, but first covers have just one, and that makes a first cover so much more rare. It is not difficult to find a Michael Jordan rookie card for sale. Now you may have to spend some change, but it's not hard to find. It is very difficult to find a Michael Jordan first cover from SI in newsstand available for sale because there's just not that many out there. So this difference is the one that's probably the biggest negative for magazines. When you compare the two, magazines obviously are a lot larger than sports cards. And while that may make for a better display, it definitely creates a challenge with storage. You can store thousands of cards in a single box, but magazines take up quite a bit more space, especially when they've been slabbed by CGC. The best way to properly store magazines is a frequent conversation amongst magazine collectors, and I'm still not sure that I've seen the universally accepted best way. you love the thrill of ripping wax, you better stick to sports cards. With sports magazines, there really is no equivalent to ripping open a fresh pack and getting surprised. You pretty much know exactly what you're getting. But with the way that prices have risen lately for unopened packs, plus with how addicting it can be to constantly open them, I have to say my bank account is actually a little bit thankful for this one. So this is one of the differences that has really led me to appreciate sports magazine collecting a little bit more. 
with sports cards, there usually isn't a whole lot of historical significance. It's basically just a manufactured piece of cardboard. Now that's not gonna be the case for a Jersey patch or a game used relic, because in my opinion, those definitely have historical significance. But for the majority of cards, it really is true. Sports magazines, on the other hand, they're snapshots in sports history. If an athlete was on the cover of Sports Illustrated, there was some sort of significant reason why. It was and still is a huge deal for someone to make the cover. When you're looking back at Hall of Fame players, it is fascinating to see the instances when they made the cover of Sports Illustrated, what the date was, the context, what the story was about, and what the photo was that got included on the cover. These covers are a flashback into what was happening in the sports world at that given moment in time. So if you've seen both parts of this video, you now know that there are plenty of similarities between sports card and sports magazine collecting, as well as several key differences. Each hobby is a lot of fun, and it definitely comes with its own set of pros and cons. Now, if you're interested in the topic of sports magazine collecting, please go ahead, like, subscribe, and drop a comment below. I will have lots more content coming your way. Trivia time. Last video, I asked what was the very first Sports Illustrated issue to feature more than one Hall of Famer on the cover. Shout out to Tyler Thomas for being the first to answer correctly. He knew that the correct answer was the issue from April 11th, 1955, which featured both Willie Mays and Hall of Fame manager Leo DeRocher on the cover. Now for today's question. In a previous video, I mentioned that the very first SI issue from 1954 is the issue that so far has been graded the most times with 495 copies being graded by CGC. Which issue as of today has been graded the second most times? Drop your answer in the comments, and if you're the first to answer correctly, I will give you a shout out in the next video. See you guys.